I get pee pee smashed. Soap, soap, soap. I play table tennis inside. I play tennis outside. Mud piles. What do all these random things mean? Why am I speaking random gibberish? Well, it's not actually random gibberish. These are all different mnemonics that medical students and healthcare people use to remember certain things about medicine. So in this video, I'm gonna give you 31 medical mnemonics that I think are pretty useful and that I use a decent amount of the time. So the first one is mud piles. And these are all causes of anion gap metabolic acidosis. And what is anion gap metabolic acidosis? Well, really it's just saying that there's some acid coming from some part of the body that isn't from potassium, bicarbonate, sodium, or chloride. And the first thing is methanol, mud. U is for uremia. D is for diabetic ketoacidosis. P is for propylene glycol. I is for iron and isoniazid. L is for lactic acidosis. E is for ethanol or ethylene glycol, and S is for salicylates, like aspirin and stuff like that. So the next one is OPQRST, and this is just a good kind of way to localize or figure out more information about pain and kind of where this pain is coming from. O is for onset, P is for provocation, so what makes it better or worse? Q is for quality, so is it sharp? Is it dull? Like, what kind of thing is it? R is for radiation, so does it go, if it's, say, in the middle of your chest, does it go to your left arm or your right arm or kind of anywhere else? S is severity, so how severe kind of is this pain from zero to 10, 10 being the worst pain you've ever had in your life, zero of nothing, what would you rate this pain as? And T is timing. And the next one is one of my favorite ones, and this one is I get PP smashed. And this is one way you can kind of figure out different etiologies or different possible causes of pancreatitis. So I is idiopathic, so we don't know. Anything could be causing it. G is gallstones, which is the second most common cause of kind of this pancreatitis. E is ethanol. This is the first most common cause of pancreatitis. And you have steroids, mumps, autoimmune disease, scorpion sting, hypertriglyceridemia or hypercalcemia, ERCP, which is enteroretrograde cholangiopancreatography which is a mouthful, but it's basically they just stick a tube so they can see kind of in your biliary tree or kind of all the ducts around your bile tree. And D is drugs. So the next mnemonic is SIG E caps. And this is a mnemonic that a physician or kind of a general physician might do if they're trying to screen someone or learn more if someone has depression. So S is for sleep. Has there been any changes in your sleep? I is for interest. Do you still have interest in things? G is for guilt. Do you feel guilty about something? E is for energy. Do you feel like you have enough energy or is it more energy gone? C is for concentration. This is like mental concentration. Has there been a big change in what someone can cognitively concentrate on? A is for appetite. Are you eating more or less? P is for psychomotor activity. Are you more kind of active or less active? Is it harder to move your muscles or kind of the same? And S is for suicidal ideation. The next one is a mnemonic that I kind of invented on my own and that I invented this a while ago because there's three parts to the small intestine, right? You have the duodenum, the jejunum, and the ileum. And I remember I never really could figure out which way one came first. And then I bought this drone and I had this drone and it was DJI. And since then I've never forgotten it by just using kind of the drone, DJI, duodenum, jejunum, and ileum. And that's the order it goes from, from like the top to the bottom. The next mnemonic, mnemonic number six, are treatments for pulmonary edema. And this is LMNOP, LMNOP. And that's Lasix, morphine, nitrates, oxygen, and position. And you can see here, this is a pretty cool x-ray. You can see a good amount of edema kind of in the different fields here. And so you might treat this with some Lasix. That would be pretty important. Oh, and just as a quick disclaimer here, and this is for the rest of the video, right? I'm not giving any medical advice here. These are not things that you should be doing and treating someone or doing anything like this. These are just things that I use to help me remember stuff for when I'm studying for school. The next mnemonic is around suicide risk, and this is aptly named sad persons. And S is sex for male. A is age, so if you're less than 19 or greater than 45. D is for depression. P is for a previous attempt. E is for excessive alcohol or drug use. R is for rational thinking loss. S is if you're separated or divorced or widowed or something like that. O is for an organized or serious attempt. N is for no social support. And S is for stated future attempt. So sad persons. The next mnemonic is SOAP, and this is kind of the one mnemonic that I'm using the most right now in medical school, because I am in third year. And this is kind of the mnemonic you use to present pretty much every single patient to any of your seniors. So S is subjective. What are they saying? Do they feel like they have a fever? Do they feel like they have a cough? Are they saying they feel really nauseous? 
O is objective. What is something that they're not feeling, but you can see for a fact? Like, for example, you put a thermometer under their tongue and you know their temperature. You count their heart rate. You see their blood pressure. And A is assessment. What is your assessment of this person that you're going to help relate to the team? So it might be something like, this is a 45-year-old female with a past medical history of heart failure that comes in presenting with shortness of breath. And plan is what you're going to do to fix this person. So if it's a 45-year-old female with a history of congestive heart failure who comes in presenting with shortness of breath, I might think, okay, there might be some kind of pulmonary edema going on because the heart is backing up fluid and that fluid is getting put into the lungs, which is making it harder for that person to breathe. The next mnemonic is A, B, C, D, E, and this is for melanoma risk. Is it asymmetrical or is it symmetrical? If it's asymmetrical, it's more likely something malignant. What's the border to this? Is the border kind of a nice smooth ring or is it kind of something more jaggedy, kind of like you see here? What's the color like? Is the color the same throughout or is the color different in each of these places? What's the diameter like? Is, the, is it a pretty big kind of mole or is it a small mole? And E, is it evolving? Is this mole changing? The next mnemonic is PVT Tim Hall. And these are just the essential amino acids that you kind of need to get from the environment that your body doesn't pr produce. These are amino acids that you need to get up from the environment. So that is phenylalanine, valine, threonine, tryptophan, isoleucine, methionine, histidine, arginine, lysine, leucine. Say that 20 times fast. The next mnemonic, which I used a lot during my OBGYN rotation is veal cha. On the one side, you'll have V, which is variable decelerations, and then this might be caused by a cord compression. And then on the other side in your head, you'll have E, which is early decelerations. So on the other side is the H, which means it's head compression. And then you have A. So A on the one side from the veal chop, right? V-E-A, A is accelerations. And then O on the other side is OK. And then L, and P. So you have L on the one side, which is late decelerations, and P on the other side, which means placental insufficiency. The next mnemonic are the five Ps. So that is pulse, pain, paresthesias, pallor, or paralysis. And these are all things that you want to be looking out for if, for example, you have a new kind of dressing on someone and you're worried, okay, am I cutting off circulation to their hand? The next mnemonic is indications for dialysis, and this is A-E-I-O-U, or the vowels, right? Indications for dialysis are something when someone is really sick, so sick that they actually actually need outside kidneys, so something like kidneys in the outside world to help filter the blood. So A is if there's acidosis, significant acidosis, E is for electrolytes, I is for intoxication, O is for overload, so fluid overload, or U is for uremia. The next mnemonic is around a disease called Kawasaki disease, and the mnemonic is crash and burn. And these are just clinical signs of this disease. And what is Kawasaki disease? Well, it's something that happens to kids usually that are under than five. At a significant state, it can even cause coronary heart disease in kids, so it's something you want to pay close attention to. So crash and burn. C is conjunctivitis, R is rash, A is adenopathy, which might be swollen lymph nodes, conjunctivitis is just redness in your eyes, S is strawberry tongue, I think that's pretty straightforward, H is hand and foot erythema, so this might be like a redness on their hands or feet, and B is burn fever. The next mnemonic is wet, wobbly, and wacky. And this is a good mnemonic for thinking of the different clinical signs of someone who has normal pressure hydrocephalus. So what is normal pressure hydrocephalus? Well, this just means there's an excess or a buildup of cerebrospinal fluid inside of your brain. And when you have all this fluid inside of your brain, it kind of pushes on things and kind of makes things not function as they normally would. And the reason it's called normal pressure is because you would think with all this kind of extra cerebrospinal fluid inside your brain that you would kind of get a bigger pressure. But when you actually do a spinal tap and you figure out the pressure from the spinal tap, it's actually a normal pressure which is why it's called normal pressure, hydro, fluid, water, whatever, cephalus, brain. So wet, urinary incontinence, wobbly, gait instability, and wacky kind of Alzheimer's-esque kind of things or dementia. The next one is categorizing clinical symptoms or remembering the clinical signs of mania. And this is dig fast. So D is for distractibility. I is for indiscretion. G is for grandiosity. F is for flight of ideas. A is for activity increase. S is for sleep deficit. And T is talkative. So if you're talking to someone who maybe has bipolar disorder and you're trying to figure out if they are in a manic episode right now, which is significant, right? Because when someone's in a manic episode, they can do kind of certain things that might harm them. The next one is x-ray reading. So you see you have a nice little x-ray here. This is completely normal. And the first thing is airway. So trachea. So is the trachea kind of normal here? It looks pretty normal to me. Breathing. How is it? Breathing and bones. So how do the lungs look? Are they kind of going all the way to the edges of the screen here and all the way to the edges here? Do you see these nice little vessels and nice little things coming out to the edge? Because if it wasn't at the edge, if you had a black kind of border, maybe right around here, that might be something like a pneumothorax. And also the bones. Look at the ribs. 
Do the ribs look like there's any breaks or any break smashes in them? Look at the clavicles up here. Do you notice any breaks in them? No, they look pretty good. The next one is cardiac. Take a look at the heart. What does the size of the heart look like? Is it is there kind of any blurriness around the edges? The next one is D, diaphragm. So look at the bottom here. Does it look really flat? Is there maybe some blurriness? So there might be a fusion around here. Like what does it look like down here? And the last one is extra. So do you see a foreign body somewhere? So like if someone, for example, kids, when they choke on something, it usually goes down the right main bronchus, right? So you might see something around here. Do they have a pneumoperitoneum, which is a pretty serious thing? Is there something else going on? The next mnemonic is, which is one that I really like, I don't know why, it's just kind of a nice one. C3, C4, C5 keeps the diaphragm alive. And C3, C4, C5 are kind of the nerves that form the phrenic nerve. And the phrenic nerve is what innervates your diaphragm and kind of tells your diaphragm, okay, we gotta breathe here. We gotta move up and down so we can move air in and out. So yeah, that's a good mnemonic. The next one is layers of the epidermis. So what are the layers from top to bottom of the epidermis that you need to know? And the mnemonic here is come layers let's get sunburned. This is just the stratum corneum, the stratum lucidum, stratum granulosum, stratum spinosum, and stratum basale. The next mnemonic is fat RN, and this is a mnemonic which you can figure out to say, okay, what are the signs of someone having a TTP or thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura? And this is a pretty significant thing. This can actually kill people, so it's something you want to be aware of. So thrombotic, what does that mean? Well, that you're creating thromboses. What's a thrombosis? Well, it's really just a clot, so you're creating clots. Thrombocytopenic, what does that mean? Well, thrombocytopenic Penic. Penic means smaller thrombocyte. Thrombocytes are your platelets. So if you have small amount of platelets, it means you have a low amount of platelets. Purpura is just little points of bleeding that you can see on the skin when on people's body. What are the signs of this? Well, fat RN is fever, anemia, thrombocytopenia, renal failure, or something neurologically going on. So you have your femoral triangle, which is kind of at the part of your thigh that kind of a lot of these important vessels go through. And if you're thinking from outside to inside, what is the order of these vessels? It's nerve artery, vein, empty space right here, and then lymphatics. So the next one is I ate the number eight, 10, the number 10, eggs at 12. So when you say I ate, the IVC or the inferior vena cava, which leads into the right side of the heart is at T8 or level T8 of your spinal cord. 10 eggs, EG esophagus and G vagus. So your esophagus and your vagus nerve kind of perforate the diaphragm at T10. So I ate 10 eggs at 12. So 12 is the aorta. So the aorta perforates the diaphragm right around T12. So the next mnemonic is a very simple one, ADEC. And these are just the fat soluble vitamins. And why is it important to know the fat soluble vitamins? Well, certain vitamins are absorbed more in fat than others. So if you have a disease like something like Crohn's disease or cystic fibrosis, you might have more more difficulty absorbing these fat soluble vitamins, so you might need to supplement them more. And it's just vitamin A, D, E, K. It's pretty straightforward. Another anatomy mnemonic here. So you see the serratus anterior here, which is right kind of at the front of your ribs. And the serratus anterior is just innervated by the long thoracic nerve. So salt, serratus, anterior long thoracic nerve. It's a nice, easy mnemonic. The next one is sensitivity and specificity. So this is spin and snout. And when you're thinking of this in your head, think big SP, little I N. Big S N, little O T, O U T. So spin, spin, you're gonna rule it in. So specificity rules it in. So you, if you have a very specific test and the test is positive, you can rule that disease in, or it's likely that maybe, probably this is the disease. And if you have a very sensitive test and it's a negative test, so if you have a very sensitive test for a disease and this test is negative, then you can likely rule this disease out. Snout, a very sensitive test will help you rule out diseases. And sensitivity and specificity is something that was really confusing for me for a while, and it's still sometimes confusing for me, but the more you kind of do practice problems and stuff like this with these concepts, the better you'll be at understanding this. So the next one are the three Ds around kind of this niacin deficiency, and this causes diarrhea, dementia, and dermatitis, which you can see here. So the next one is another anatomy one. Wow, anatomy people love mnemonics. That's because we have to memorize a lot of seemingly random information. And this one is some anatomists like effing over poor medical students. And this is a doozy. So get ready. So it's some superior thyroid artery, and these are all branches of the external carotid artery. Anatomists, ascending pharyngeal artery, like lingual artery, effing over 
facial artery over occipital artery, poor posterior auricular artery, medical maxillary artery, students superficial temporal artery, and that's it. So some anatomists like effing over poor medical students. The next one is carcinoid syndrome. So what is carcinoid syndrome? Well, it's a pretty rare tumor that ends up leaking or producing a lot of serotonin. So when you have a lot of serotonin, this causes different effects in your body. And the mnemonic here is BFDR. So B, bronchospasms, F, flushing, D, diarrhea, and R is right-sided heart failure. Gallstones, gallstones, fun, fun, fun. Everyone loves gallstones, right? Your gallbladder is something that usually saves up bile so it can be used later when you need to digest certain things, right? So sometimes when you keep too much of that bile in there for too long or certain kind of other processes in the body interact with it, the bile and other things start to harden together and make these kind of stone-like material, which is a gallstone. And the people kind of more likely to get gallstones Sorry, it's not five Fs, it's four Fs. People that are 40, female, fertile, and fat. This is kind of a nice mnemonic to help you think, okay, who's more prone to developing a gallstone? The next one is PT, PTT. So what, it, what are these? Well, they're part of the coagulation cascade. Well, when you bleed, there's a certain cascade of events that help you clot the bleed for good. PT and PTT are different laboratory tests that you can do to test these different pathways. You play table tennis inside, right? You don't play table tennis outside. So playing table tennis is tests the intrinsic factors, so the intrinsic line of the coagulation cascade. And you play tennis outside, right? PT. So you play tennis outside, which means you're testing the extrinsic pathway, the extrinsic coagulation cascade. And the last mnemonic, mnemonic number 31, is the cranial nerve mnemonic and this one is some say money matters but my brother says big brains matter more there's a lot of cranial nerves and i'm actually about to start my neuroblock right now so i'm gonna have to re kind of learn all these cranial nerves but the at a basic standpoint these cranial nerves do one of two things right they either sense things they ever move things or they do both of those things. So they sense and move things so this mnemonic helps you remember whether they do one the other or both so some so sensory say sensory money motor matters motor but both and so on through the list now a lot of these mnemonics and stuff might seem silly why do i need to do all these things why do i need to memorize all these random facts but really they're important things they're things that might actually help me save someone's life in the future and in general i'm trying to kind of constantly learn and constantly be better and get better but usually like reading a textbook or looking up some manual on the internet about learning something or doing something better is really boring but still i want to increase my knowledge base i want to learn more and be better i want to level up so i like to gamify things right and there's actually evidence that supports when you gamify something you'll learn that thing more quickly and you'll actually learn it better and that's why recently I've been using brilliant a lot brilliant is a fantastic platform for online courses for math science and computer science every course is like little games and little challenges that makes me wish I started using this kind of platform earlier my favorite course right now is a course on understanding statistics. With the amount of like science news out there today and the importance of like interpreting data from new academic journals and articles, I wanted to make sure I can really understand and not be tricked by certain statistics and graphs that I see out there. And I've actually impressed some of my supervising doctors with some of the things that I've learned from this course, like certain data fallacies. So if you want to level up your thinking, head to brilliant.org slash Zach. And if you're quick at clicking that link, the first 200 people to use this link will get 20% percent off the annual premium subscription but that is it that was a fun little video that i hope you guys enjoyed these are mnemonics that i actually use and that i think if you're a medical school or the healthcare field and you're kind of looking for certain ways to help you remember certain things these these are some great fun ones to look at but yeah thank you so much for watching and i will see you in the next one